Hello, respective viewers. I'm George from Ireland. So this video is about the furor about uh, Martin Bashir's interview with um, Her Royal Highness Princess Diana of unhappy and inglorious memory. So I think you can get my take on Diana from my introduction to, to her. Um, so this all relates to an interview which aired in November 1995. Martin Bashir is, is a BBC journalist and now some people are saying his career should be over, what he did was outrageous. But um, well, let's go into what the particular complaint is now, because these allegations have been around for about a year, but it's the whole thing has, has blown up again, is that uh, he allegedly um, tricked her into granting this interview on the basis of forged documentation. Such trumpery from a journalist is, is unprecedented, not really. Um, I don't know the truth of those allegations, did he present, present her with um, fabricated bank statements, as is claimed? I have no idea whether these are hoaxes or not. Now, I well remember the occasion because um, the United Kingdom was transfixed by this um, interview that was broadcast. It wasn't live, by the way. And it was particularly galling for me because I was, um, uh, I was a president of this history society at school at the time. And a professor was coming to speak and he thought he wouldn't get an audience because it was going out that same night. Actually, a good few people did show up anyway. We weren't quite such in, so much into royal tittle-tattle. And about this time, people talk, were told us talking about the War of the Windsors, the British, civil, the British royal family at war against each other, tearing their, each other's throats out. Well, a bit like they are today. So it's like Hegel said that history repeats itself first time as tragedy, second time as farce. Um, so um, Martin Bashir, he's from an unusual background. He's a British Pakistani Christian. Um, but he's one of the UK's foremost interviewers. You don't hear about him so much now. And later he did a fly on the wall documentary about uh, Michael Jackson and the Jackson family complained saying that uh, he tried to show Jacko in a, in, a, in a negative light, but the un unaired footage showed that Bashir saying you have such a remarkably good relationship with your children. Anyway, so Princess Diana, she granted this interview partly as her riposte against her estranged husband, Charles, Prince of Wales, because Prince Charles had granted a um, interview to um, Jonathan Dimbleby, or is it David? I always get those two mixed up, the younger of the two Dimbleby brothers, um, uh, which had aired a few months earlier uh, that summer, in which um, uh, Dimbleby had asked him about his friendship with Mrs Parker Bowles. Was it more than a friendship? And Prince Charles didn't actually say that it was. Everybody knows he was having an adulterous relationship with her for um, several years before this interview went to air. But, uh, and then Dimbleby asked, said, Sir, you know, have you always remained faithful to your marriage? And Prince Charles said, oh, yes, of course. Until it became clear the marriage was irretrievably broken down. So he slipped in almost under the radar an acknowledgement that he'd been unfaithful to his wife, saying it was only when the marriage was clearly... Um, just a disaster, married on paper only, that uh, he was unfaithful to Princess Diana. So um, Princess Diana, well, she, she spoke to various people about it and she was very pally with her staff. She was unstuffy, um, servant saying, come on, get yourself a cup of tea, watch the telly with me, chatting to them um, uh, as, though, as though they were on an equal footing. Some people find that refreshing, egalitarian, but doesn't that strike at the very idea of royalty, which is that there is a hierarchy um, they're, the, they're at the top of the tree, but she does the same claims not to recognise social strata. So why do you want the title princess then? Because in the divorce that came up, titles are a property. And when it came to the divorce, the alimony, the payments, child, child custody was sorted out. But also, um, was she going to be allowed to be called Princess of Wales or not? She was no longer had to ha handle Her Royal Highness. She could be Diana, Princess of Wales, not Her Royal Highness. Um, Princess Diana or whatever. I mean, wow. Strictly speaking, she's actually called Princess Charles. You'll be really strict about it because she wasn't born a princess, married to become a princess. If you have princess, it's supposed to be followed by her husband's Christian name, Charles, not her own. But anyway, for the last couple of generations, people haven't observed that rule largely. Um, Anyway, so she spoke to one of her drivers, and I've seen his interview on telly about this, and, and um, um, he, you know, people advising her not to not to grant this interview. So she, but anyway, she did give the interview to, to um, uh, Martin Bashir. Had Charles, had he really damaged himself by acknowledging his infidelity? But then again, he was just saying what everybody knew. Phone hacking had been going on. It wasn't until about 2011 it was really proved about all the whole phone hacking, how much it was going on. But various tabloid newspapers, they managed to hack into Prince Charles's phone and get uh, um, recordings of him 
um, his, his goo goo talk with his paramour, um, Camilla Parker Bowles. So she was Mrs. Parker Bowles, she was married to Andrew Parker Bowles at the time. So she was more or less his maîtresse en titre, but they didn't appear together in public till I think it was 2002. Um, she's having to be sneaked into him in the boot of a car and things like that. Well, some people said she looked not as quite as attractive as a boot of a car, the wicked wig of the West, witch of the West Country. One waspish uh, wag said um, that, you know, uh, someone really ought to introduce Camilla to the thing called moisturiser. Um, Anyway, so uh, Charles, Prince Charles was not so candid in saying, yes, she was my lover and these are my feelings for her. It was all oblique admission. But, um, and he was uh, quite chirpy, affable, as he usually is. So Princess Diana came on uh, with, a, with heavy eyeliner, you know, blinking at you from almost under her fringe, something her, her um, um, uh, son, Prince William, was to do uh, when he had to walk behind her casket during her exequies. So um, she was very much playing the victim, and okay, perhaps she was a mere naïf, the sacrificial virgin who married Prince Charles at the age of 19, so well, 20, just not knowing what she was getting herself in for. She wasn't that stupid, she knows what a princess is. She comes from a noble family, and uh, she's a descendant of Charles II. But anyway, that he wasn't really committed to this, the love of his life was Camilla, and he was going along marrying, marrying uh, Diana, because more or less ordered to by his parents. So, um, she had this mournful demeanour throughout the interview, Diana, and she spoke in these um, soft and almost sobbing accents, um, maintaining her composure. I would imagine it was quite affected, her, her appearance there. So she's men melancholic and filled with um, self-pity, but remorseless for what, what, what she'd done. I mean, she hadn't been perfect either. She clearly had mental health issues, a bit unstable. I'm not saying she's actually raving gaga. So woe was me. That was that was her shtick. She, so she was saying hard, hard done by. Sound familiar? I can think of a couple of people presently who behave just like that. Um, who suffer from martyrdom complex. And I, I suppose this is what they got it from genetically. But also she was a role model and she was presented as girls. So you should aspire to be like her. And of course, the young Meghan Markle was watching avidly. Uh, Meghan Markle, who later told this whopper of a lie of claiming not to know much about the royal family, despite being absolutely obsessive about the royal family. OK, and maybe I'm fixated too, but I don't pretend to be with one of them or try and didn't try to marry in, marry one of them or anything like that. Well, why would they want to marry me? Good question. Um, but uh, Princess Diana was asked about various things. Had she sexually harassed Oliver Hoare? She claimed that she hadn't. Asked about um, James uh, Hewitt, that uh, former cavalry officer. And she said, yes, I was in love with him. Yes, I adored him. Um, so confirming that. Although I don't think she actually said that she committed adultery with him. Um, she also, she was a nasty piece of work sometimes. She put around these malicious rumours that um, uh, Prince Charles was having an affair with Tiggy Leg Burke, who was um, the children's nanny, that he'd impregnated her, that she'd had an abortion and so on. And they both denied that. I mean, I don't know it to be false, but I, I, I doubt it's true. He had a very long-term relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles. Whatever Prince Charles's flaws, however bad he was to Diana, I don't think I don't doubt he was, um, really was committed to um, Camilla Parker Bowles. And then Princess Diana saying that um, her, her um, separated husband, Prince Charles, they hadn't actually got divorced by that stage, should never be king. It should go straight to William and that um, Prince Charles ought to ask himself what role he should play, that she thought that Prince Charles was temper temperamentally unsuitable, just didn't have the mental equipment to be king and so on. This was obviously deeply unhelpful to him, but she was trying to hit back. She'd been hurt. So hell hath no fury like a woman scorned to slightly misquote William Congreve. And how about her own role? What was she going to carve out um, as her um, role in the public space? And Princess Diana said she wanted to be Queen of Hearts. She thought she might be never a queen. Now, some people find that quite cloyingly, nauseatingly schmaltzy. Was it over-sentimental? Played well in some quarters. So the Royal Civil War it more or less divided the United Kingdom. And broadly speaking, traditionalists were on the side of Prince Charles, and whereas um, uh, modernisers were on the side of, of um, Princess, Princess Diana. A sort of a left-right breakdown or a generational um, divide. Um, having said that, the hard left in the UK, of course, are anti-monarchical. Just, just do away with it altogether. This ridiculous royal soap opera, they think it's a complete embarrassment. Prince Charles had his supporters like his uh, former equerry, the Honourable Nicholas Soames, um, who was a Conservative MP at the time, Minister of the Armed Forces. 
But anyway, the divorce came through, was it in January 1997, just like eight months before she died. Um, so uh, did Martin Bashir, did he dupe her with these uh, falsified uh, bank statements? I don't know. And there's going to be an investigation into it. And Prince William's angry, saying something must be done, and the BBC should have to apologise, and so on. Well, you know, journalists lie all the time to get to the truth, and that's considered good journalism. I'm not sure what, what difference the bank statements would make. She wasn't paid for the interview. Um, but uh, his, his mother had said things which are deeply um, harmful to the royal family, just like his brother and his sister-in-law, as Harry and Meghan, are doing today. So they provided templates for um, Prince Harry the, um, the self-pity, the wallowing in grief, the excessive sentimentality, um, the lashing out, the same things which are injurious to the royal family's name, so they're bringing them into disrepute. Now, they've all done wrong, you know, Princess Anne having a dog's um, out of control or caught speeding, Prince Andrew, well, where do I begin? Um, Prince Charles with his cuckoo ideas interfering with the NHS. So, yes, they're all flawed, they're all too human, but no one has done such calculated harm as Meghan and Harry have so persistently, so many interviews which are um, intended to cause the maximum possible damage to the House of Windsor. Uh, uh, bear on destroying it, so far as I can see. When they shan't succeed, they do have a few foam-flecked fanatical fans in the United Kingdom uh, and abroad. Gradually, I think people will get bored of them. They've had a surfeit of this um, sickly self-pity from this uh, gruesome twosome. So bad mouthing the firm will only get you so far and it's a very transparent what they're trying to do to um, make a splash to get the maximum publicity because there they're saying oh we just want a quiet life. Well then um, close your cake hole. Stop giving interviews all the time. Get out of my face. Yeah stop assisting the interview the, 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 the media and then you live by the media so you'll die by the media. How do you want to rake in tens of millions of dollars by a Netflix deal, by selling your image access to you. So it's ridiculous. And also, what are those two talk about in interviews? It's not really ecology or issues. It's mainly about themselves. So it seems like um, Prince Harry suffered from an overdose of therapy and saying, oh yes, darling, you poor little thing, you're such a victim. How about all the brown people who are killed in Afghanistan? Are they not victims? Anyway, so this has caused really disharmonious relations in the royal family, they're more or less out of the royal family, the two want the cake and eat it. And with Diana, it was somewhat the same. And Charles, possibly, he fouled up. If he hadn't done it, she hadn't done it. But the day after the interview, she asked the driver, what should I do? What, what do you think of what I did? He said, do you want to know? Do you really, really want to know? Because he knew that this would not play well if he told her, frankly, what he believed she'd done the interview. She, she insisted on, on hearing him out. So he said, in your silence was your strength. And you've made an enormous error a bit by uh, granting this interview and um, confessing that you've been unfaithful to your husband, admittedly, after he started it, because you were the injured party. You were innocent up, up until this point. So he said that Princess Diana never, ever spoke to him again. A bit like um, her son, Harry, um, just can't abide it when people don't concur with what she says and does and don't applaud her every deed and statement. So Prince William, he wants to blame the BBC for this, this interview, which um, uh, was really toxic for the royal family. Um, but he's telling himself a truth that he can tolerate. He can't bear to hold his mother culpable, so therefore he's pointing the finger at Martin Bashir for being a good journalist and giving what was really a world-stopping interview. Everybody was talking about it, not just in the United Kingdom or the Commonwealth or the, or the, or the Anglosphere. Um, so rather than holding his mother accountable, bearing in mind she died in, not even two years later for this, or his father accountable, they're the ones who really screwed up. Bashir performed his duty by getting this interview out of her, and well done him. That was a major feather in his cap. What an accomplishment. But yes, it's always the media's fault. It's the press had to be monstered. Now, we mustn't lump them together. The media's not a monolith. There are hundreds of um, uh, media outlets in the United Kingdom, and some uh, some are apertures for filth, could be a sewer of cho choice for the evil intention people, and also obviously some are honourable, respectable, ethical media outlets. So um, it's, it's um, torpid and inaccurate to lump them all together. Anyway, that's my penny's worth on that uh, Martin Bashir interview with the late Princess Diana. So please follow me on Twitter and Instagram, on Facebook and so forth. Toodle pip.